So now that we've talked about the microservices, let's focus on the client. And you'll see that the client is actually also a little different from previous clients that we've seen before. And that's because it's gotta be able to handle two different microservices. So we define something called the math services client class, and that has a couple of methods in it that perform synchronous remote method invocations on the GCD and primality microservices in order to perform those math operations. And you're gonna see when it's used with the driver program, these calls are actually done concurrently, which is kind of fun. So we mark this as a component so it can be automatically handled with dependency injection and auto wiring. Speaking of auto wiring, we auto wire the proxies to talk to the GCD microservice and the primality microservice so we don't have to write that constructor code ourselves. It's not a big deal, but it just helps a little bit. And then we've got these two methods, check primalities and compute GCDs, which basically just forward down to the underlying proxies. Speaking of which, speaking of the proxies, let's take a look at a proxy. And I deliberately made these proxies somewhat different from the proxies we've looked up, looked at heretofore, and you'll see how we do that in a second. So let's take a look at the primality proxy. As you'll see, the GCD proxy is almost identical, just a few little tweaks, differences. So we mark this as a component so we can auto wire the REST template. And you'll see that the REST template, when we look at that code, is actually a little different from the REST templates we've looked at up to this point. Up to this point, we've actually encoded in the REST template that's returned from the get REST template bean factory method. We've had it encode the, the basically the, the protocol and the host name of the particular uh, service, microservice, and I think also the, the port number for that matter. And the reason we did that was we only had one microservice, so it was easy to do that. Now we've got two microservices, so we have to be a little bit more flexible. So we're going to take a look at a different way to do things. So here's how you can implement check primalities if you don't have the REST template pre-configured to talk to a particular server. So that's, that's the way this is going to differ. At a high level, of course, this is just a proxy method that's going to shield the client driver from low-level programming details of HTTP. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the URI Components Builder class and create a new instance of it by using the new instance factory method. So now we've got a new URI Components Builder method. And then we're going to go ahead and supply the protocol, the port number, and the host address. So in this case, it might be, for example, HTTP localhost colon 8082, which is the port number for the primality proxy. We're then going to go ahead and set the route name in the path by using the path method. This is a little different from what we've done before. Everything so far is a little different from what we've done before. Before we used the from path static factory method, but now we're using the new instance and then filling in the scheme, the port, the host, and the path. And we're going to give it the check primality list string. We're then going to go ahead and add the query param for the prime candidates, which is going to be this list that we convert from a list of, of uh, integers into a string of comma-separated strings. It's a string of comma-separated string values. So you can see what it looks like down below on the little bumper sticker at the bottom. And then finally, we go ahead and call the build method, which builds us a new URI components builder object based on all the things we just provided it using the Fluent Interface Builder Pattern Model. And then we convert that into a URI string. So what we end up with is kind of summarized at the bottom, HTTP localhost comma 8082, check primality list question mark, and then we've got the prime the uh, prime candidates, which are going to be the series of, of integers converted into a comma separated string. After doing all that, of course, then we can go ahead and have a call down to our friendly helper method make get request list, where we pass in the REST template, that URI we just constructed, and the return value we expect the results to come back as, which will be an array of integers, which are then converted into a list of integers and returned as the return value from make get request list. The GCD proxy is pretty much the same. The only difference is, of course, the port number is going to be different and the path is going to be different. And um, I guess, uh, let's see, there's one other difference too. I, I guess that's about it. Those are the two. Oh, the query param has got a different name as well. So there's a couple of minor differences, but otherwise it's the same basic idea. So this is just showing you a little bit more fulsome way of defining all the different aspects of creating 
an HTTP request using the URI components builder helper class. And that's the end of our overview of the client structure and functionality.